It's getting cold. Are you feeling cold? I feel like I could use something to warm me up. Hi, friends of cocktails. With the colder months finally here, the delightful aromas of mulled wine and winter spices will start to fill town squares and our hearts. So I'll make two cocktail time versions of mulled wine, red and white, with a few extra things to make both versions a little special. Don't worry, nothing crazy. Just a few spices and a little something to elevate the cozy experience for you and your loved ones. And the timing for this episode lined up perfectly. November 11th is St. Martin's Day, celebrating the day when the must traditionally turns to wine. It's a huge celebration in my hometown. And with that, it's also time to start making mulled wine. So let's first see how mulled wine or glue wine is usually made at street markets and cafes. It's cocktail time. This recipe works for both red and white wine, so pick your favorite. I'm using red this time. Pour 12 ounces or 360 ml of your choice of wine into a pot. Dilute that with water, 8 ounces or 240 ml. For sweetness, add 4 tablespoons of sugar. Throw in about 10 cloves and some ground cinnamon to taste. Slowly bring it up to a simmer, stirring occasionally, and simply pour into nice old school cups. Garnish with a cinnamon stick and an orange wheel. Enjoy it while it's still hot. The only difference between this recipe and what you'll get when you order it in the wild is that they might go for a bigger yield by adding a bit more water. It will get you nice and warm either way. But we are here to elevate your cocktail game, so let's see how to make better mulled wine. Here are all the ingredients for the red and white cocktail time mulled wines. Treat this as a template for how to add complementing flavors with the base, modifier, sweetener, spices and so on and create your own pairings with stuff you have at home. I'll first make one, then the other version, and taste them both at the end. Let's start with the red, in the loving memory of the red subscribe button, that has been changed by YouTube. But still, hit subscribe, to help us reach 100,000 subscribers. Thank you. For the base, you'll need 10 ounces or 300 ml of red wine. Find the wine you like, but with everything we'll add, it doesn't have to be top shelf. The modifier will be sweet vermouth, 3 ounces or 90 ml. For dilution, add 6 ounces or 180 ml of water. As with everything, you can adjust this to your own taste in future batches. The sweetener I'm using here is Rich Demerara syrup. 2.5 ounces or 75 ml of this 2 to 1 raw sugar syrup. Next are the spices. In a mortar and pestle, lightly crush 2 grams of cardamom, 1.6 grams of saline cinnamon and 1 gram of dried allspice or pimento berries. Add to the mixture and follow that with the citrus component. 6 grams of orange peels, about 4 thin peels should be enough. Lastly, 10 drops of saline solution. This will enhance all of the flavors we added, so don't skip it. Just like you wouldn't skip salt in cooking. Then it's the same as with the basic malt wine recipe. Slowly bring it up to a simmer, stirring occasionally to help all the ingredients get along nicely. Once it's gently simmering, it's time to pour into your choice of cups, through a fine mesh strainer this time, and garnish it. I'm going with a star anise and an orange peel. You should enjoy it while it's still hot, but I'll quickly rip up the white wine version before doing that. For this one, your base will be, of course, white wine. 10 ounces or 300 milliliters. Again, go with something you enjoy, but it doesn't have to break the bank. Here, the modifier is Falernum liqueur, 3.5 ounces or just over 100 milliliters. This strong liqueur has notes of ginger, vanilla, almond and lime. Same as before, 6 ounces or 180 ml of water for dilution. Sweetener here will be honey syrup, 1.5 ounce or 45 ml. My recipe for the syrup is closest to 3 parts honey, 2 parts water. But check out my syrups episode for full details. For spices, I think cloves, 0.8 gram, cassia cinnamon, 2.5 grams. Will pair nicely with this lighter style of wine. Ground them lightly with a mortar and pestle and add to our liquid base. Citrus component will be lemon peel, 4.5 gram, which should be 4 medium sized peels. For a bit more complexity, I'll also add 4 dashes of lemon bitters. These are homemade, and if you'd like to see the recipe, let me know in the comments. Lastly, same as before, 10 drops of saline solution. This was made with 20 grams of salt, dissolved in 80 grams of water. It's really that simple, but you can always just add a pinch of salt to your cocktails to make them pop. From here is the same procedure as with the previous one. Slowly bring it to a simmer. Once that happens, strain it into your preferred mugs. Garnish with a lemon peel that's been spiked with cloves. Beautiful. The smell in here is incredible. Wine, spices, citrus, it's almost festive. Let's dive in. First the red, rich aroma with star anise in the front. But when you take a sip, it's the sweet vermouth that gives it the extra layer. 
cardamom and the allspice also add enough to make it clear this isn't your typical glue wine and neither is this white one. Ginger spiciness together with honey are what's in the forefront, taking this mulled wine into another wintery experience, even with cloves and cinnamon being a staple. And lemon just gives it a nice fresh boost. If you'll try these recipes with your own twist, write them in the comments or tag me on Instagram. Before I finish this, I have another pleasant task. The newest person to join the list of our active top tier patrons is Matthew Jones. Welcome to the set of Cocktail Time, Matthew. Thank you to all of you who support us in making these episodes. And thank you for watching until the end. I'll see you next week for a little celebration. Until then, keep warm with these recipes. Cheers!